Snooper Thursday! Woo! That was loud. Going for um, it. Yeah, so this week uh, we've spent a lot of time on the East Coast and the Midwest and whatevs. Are you guys happy? Um, I believe we've made it up. Now, From the feedback, I think people, most people are happy. Yeah, yeah. no, people are like, well, hey, thanks for repping the East Coast. And, and, yes, and thanks for this is repping the East Coast. <laughs> You made a word. Repping East. Repping East. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we've repped the East Coast. Now we're going to re rep the Pacific Northwest mm -hmm. with Which some we Kaldara IPA. We haven't done the Pacific Northwest in a while. Like We did some Deschutes, one. and um, we did our rug beer ones. Deschutes was way, yeah, those were both back, way back in the day. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's been anything. a long time. It's, it's been, been a while. Um, I think the shoots. I really want to go up there and do a show with them. So that's why we so, haven't really. Me too. Yeah, we haven't really done much with them yeah. because I'm like, yeah, we're just gonna do that on the, the thing. So in case you didn't hear what Steve said, we're doing a Caldera's IPA. They are. I don't think I actually said those words. <laughs> no, you said Caldera. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, we're it's uh it's they're from Ashland, Oregon. Um, this is a great beer. I mean, I, I've had this before many, many times. It's a, it's a, it's a standby IPA for me. Yeah, that's how it is for me too. I mean, I remember um, when I was. Working and it's in a can, so kudos to that. Yeah, when I was working down at a uh, the homebrew shop uh, I used to work at, um, this old beer too, and I used to get this beer all the time just because and it's a really great standby. Like, here's IPA. here's my thing about Oregon that I love, um, is that lately there's oh cheers yeah, that's just, that's yeah. while I while I ramble on. Um, lately, there's been a lot of the like beer, like best beer cities in the U.S. competition yeah, online sure, and whatever, sure. and those are fine. Those are cool. Asheville, um, Asheville wins all the time. <laughs> Go Julie. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, the I think what it is is people forget what Portland and Oregon, Portland and, like Oregon specifically, but Portland for me. But what Oregon did for craft beer in the '90s, people forget about that. And yeah. this is like this is an I think Caldera is a great example of what like organ brewed beer is true craft beer in mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, well, love the aroma on this beer. I mean, it's, it's funny because this beer is like Ooh. what Turo, Munich, and Crystal. And they didn't specify which Crystal. Um, yeah, I've I've used Munich quite a bit in my home brews, mm -hmm. um, and I get flack for that just because it's like oh you're not supposed to put Munich in or Vienna. I use Vienna mm -hmm. too. These are people who are not brewing, but are just sitting on Facebook and criticizing people who are brewing. Not even that. I'm just, one of those I just people. talk and like, oh, why'd you do that? And that doesn't make sense. But um, I mean, Stone does that in their IPA. So do they? Yeah, Stone uses Munich in their yeah. IPA. I had no idea. Yeah. Well, uh, now you have a response to all those people. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck oh, you. Yeah, Stone yeah. uses Fuck it. Oh, no. <laughs> what now? <laughs> no, uh, but I think uh, the crystal malt in this is definitely. More dominant. Mm, I mean, it definitely you, pops. You get sure. like a nice caramel character from it. Well, it's definitely bringing out a lot of the color. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, this is a crystal clear, pretty, yeah. pretty beer. But know. it's it's a very dark for an IPA. Well, it's that's that's kind it's of on like, the darker scale. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. kind of like Pacific Northwesty. You know what I mean? Right. It's like with with Pacific. Well, they, Northwest. Yeah, you're right. That's like a standard color for them. Their SRMs are a lot darker for their IPAs. Yeah, they usually go a little bit darker with the hoppy beers. I mean, it usually you know. <laughs> Um, leans more towards like the piney side, mm -hmm. which I definitely, I almost get like a bready kind of note off the malt with this, but it's definitely like super pine. That's that Munich. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And they use uh, Centennial, Simcoe, and Amarillo yep. in this. So yep. I would assume Centennial is the bittering um, with maybe some late. Why? Because it starts with a C? Yes. <laughs> and uh, I mean, Simcoe and Amarillo are just good late edition hops. Yeah. It's, that, it's that like that magic, like. Fairy dust combination of some kind of real, yeah. you know. Yeah, but yeah. this has that striking bitterness to it, where um, it's not necessarily like a, a, a West Coast Southern California IPA, but it's like a multi bitterness. Well, that's that's know? one of the things I appreciate about the Pacific Northwest is that they they've they, even though they're on the West Coast, they've never gotten into the West Coast style of IPAs. They've never gotten into the East Coast style of IPAs. Well, they're Pacific they Northwest. Have, there's a Pacific Northwest style of Perhaps IPAs, this, yeah. the which West is Coast completely never got into the Pacific right. Style. It's a completely different style of beer. It's it's its own like world up yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. And I kind of dig it because I mean, a lot of the Southern California beer, or at least IPAs and double IPAs you drink, of course they're bitter heavy, they're hop heavy. You know, your grain bill is pretty much there for fermentability and color, mm -hmm. and it's there to. Yep, to I mean, not to be ignored. I know Stone, like, like the Stone IPA, you get a lot of like, not 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 maltiness, but a nice mixture of the 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 candy like fruit character mixed with the the grain bill, and they've mm -hmm. done it perfect. Right. Not to say that they're ignoring the malt bill, but I think it's really easy for um, what I Southern California brewers or 
you know, right. Southwest brewers to ignore um, having a complex grain bill. Well, you know, it's kind of funny because to me, it, it almost is more of a reflection of where people live, you know? Because I mean, if you figure, you know, your Southern California, you know, your San Diego, you know, LAIE um, IPAs are always a lot lighter in color. They're always a lot drier. It's more of like a crisp, like more refreshing kind of thing. Yes. Whereas Pacific Northwest, that's an area that's gonna be, you know, a little bit more, not necessarily gloomy, but it's rainier, it's a little bit right. cooler, and so they're gonna have a little bit fuller body. They're gonna have a little bit right. more malt character to it, you know? And so even it's during, kind of yeah. a reflection of like where where you are and like the kind of mood that you're in for beer where you live, you know? I think right. it's just so like, you're saying this is a depressing IPA. No. <laughs> I was, I'm gonna call it Sad Face <laughs> Sad IPA. Face IPA. But no, that, that makes a lot of sense though for the East Coast as well, because it's the mm -hmm. same kind of thing. Like, you have a lot of more dreary weather. You have a lot more like for us Especially here in California, time, you know. it, the like December twenty fifth, you can be drinking a massive IPA because it's seventy five degrees outside and sunny. Yeah, well, perhaps. Not, 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 <laughs> yeah. In perhaps. This part of the country, right. you never know. It could right. be cold. It could be warm. Yeah. Well, not only that, but I mean, you know, in you know August September, it's going to be one hundred and five out, and so you want like I don't want no malt character whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I want dry. I want hop. Right. That's it. Exactly. You know? So I think I just think it's a cool like kind of just terroir kind of thing. You know? Terroir, um, that'd be terrier for some of you that terrier. Don't, or terrier, or yeah, yeah, that's that means the earth, the earth yeah. is being one with the earth. Right. Um, and on that note, I think we should go off to a master pairing. That's a good place to go. Yeah, that's a good place should, to go, right? Should, should go um, so go see what Bill has for us in the kitchen. Um. Hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairings. I'm your host, Bill Sysak, and of course I have John Holzer here from New Brew Thursday. Hello, hello. Um, so this next pairing, you know, sometimes I like chocolate. I always like chocolate. Sometimes I like prosciutto. I always like prosciutto. But what I really like is prosciutto on chocolate. <laughs> so that's pretty sick. So uh, uh, this great chocolatier in San Diego, uh, Jonna uh, is her name. And she has so rich chocolates. And I hope to be doing an event at Stone coming up with her. But uh, we've our paths have crossed a few times. Uh, first time I met her was at the Brewbees Beer Festival at, at Port Carlsbad right, they did yeah. last year. And she brought a bunch of amazing chocolates. And then we've been in touch ever since. I just did an event at uh, the San Diego History Center, uh, which is they're going to be doing an exhibit all year if you're out in San Diego on the history of uh brewing in San Diego, which is kind of cool. cool. But to kick it off, we did the Taste of San Diego, and I helped them pair up a bunch of restaurants with great breweries that are here. Nice. And uh, so we used her chocolates with the pairing. Um, but anyway, so that's a great chocolate we're gonna try in a minute. And then with that, I thought, you know, you know me, I don't always go with chocolate and stouts. I like to change it up, but this is a great stout and I've been wanting to do it on the show. I don't believe uh, I've had this. This is, which is perfect. Yeah. Uh, this is from Boulevard. Uh, which is out of Kansas City, Missouri. Great brewery, one of the biggest in the Midwest. Tank Seven is one of the, the best. Exactly, and they're out here now, which is really cool. So they're out all through the West Coast and you know the Midwest, of course. And so this is their uh, Smokestack series, and this is called the Dark Truth. It's a 9.7% Imperial Stout. Uh, really clean, really delicious. So uh, looking forward to uh, revisiting it. Oh. And then also to trying it with this uh, delicious chocolate. Yes. Yeah. That's um, some interesting sounding stuff. One of my favorite things about a great stout or a porter is when you get this chocolatey looking mocha. I agree. A head on there. It somehow makes yeah. it seem like it's going to taste better. Right. So you know? much better. And the beauty of craft beer, if you're drinking a macro beer and you get a big head on it, it just tastes like stale beer because those beers are made to be drunk cold and consumed. They have their place. Not at our table, right. but they have their place. But a great craft beer, the foam tastes like the beer. Yeah, that's nice. And that releases all of the aroma up into the lip, which is curved, so it traps it there until you stick your nose in it and you really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. So that's yummy. Oh. It's got chocolate and coffee, mm. but it actually tastes like it has almost the 
like a maple syrup in it. It's so rich. Yeah. Are you getting that? I am. The huge richness, which I, I'm kind of giddy because of the fact that with this chocolate prosciutto, it's going to even be more intense. So that's going to be really fun. Fruity, like dark fruity too, I would say. Which I love in a stout. Usually you get them in aged stouts, and this is a fairly fresh uh, batch. Um, it, a lot of times with the aged stouts, you start to get those uh, dark winter fruits, figs, plums, raisins, which are really fun. Uh, you definitely get them in Belgian quadruples right right off the bat. I know you're looking at it. Yeah. Go in, dig in, jump in there. <laughs> I think this is actually a toffee too. Yeah, there's a toff of that. Yeah. So excuse us while we take a bite. Mm, um. Toffee, caramel, chocolate, and then you get the saltiness of the prosciutto. It's just, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, you're right. Mm. I don't, hmm. I don't get too much of the prosciutto. Oh, you will as it progresses. Oh, it's great with the chocolate too. The beer really plays mm -hmm. out. The winter fruits come out a lot. What I love about so many of the newer generation of chocolatiers is their stuff is artisanal and it's easy to, you know, it's fairly easy to find and there's a lot of regionality. So you got a lot of great ones in San Diego. Mm -hmm. So when you get them, you know, when we were, when I was younger, long time ago, um, when you got like toffee covered chocolates and stuff like that and the hard, you know, they'd be stale a lot of times. You wouldn't know better. A lot of times you're like brittle crunching into it and stuff. Now you get these ones and it's just like it melts. Yeah. Even though it's it, even though it's hard and it's a, it just melts in your mouth. It's easy and it's because they're so delicious and mm -hmm. fresh and the ingredients that they use too. Yeah, it's delicious. So. I mean, it brings out a little bit of the smokiness in the beer, mm -hmm. I think. Um, that's the first thing that kind of hit me with this. It melds very well with the chocolate though. It's a very complimentary pairing. Yeah, it's a perfect merge. What you'll get is actually I know what you're saying about it hiding the prosciutto a little bit, but what happens is as you come around, it goes back up onto the front palate and you get saltiness up here, almost like chocolate okay, covered yeah. peanuts. Yeah. And that's the saltiness from the prosciutto. Because it's a dry mm. cured bacon basically from Italy. So you do get it on the mm -hmm. front. Okay, pick that up. Okay. Yeah, just delicious chocolate. Yeah, it's really good. Delicious beer. What do you like to pair with uh, stouts, John, when you try them? You've been around me long enough, and I know, you know, you know your beer, so. I'm really bad at pairing. Um, the chocolate is a no-brainer. I mean. So, and you know what? Stouts are so great because they're usually the ones we drink, obviously, are usually bigger stouts. I know blue cheeses. Right. Blue cheeses are great, but it's also great just to have as that kind of digestive at the end of the night. Right. And that's why it really works, luckily, with chocolates because they're usually a dessert. Mm -hmm. And in the European community, you know, and, and a lot of higher end restaurants, you have cheese as your last course anyways instead of an earlier course because it's treated as dessert. Oh. Um, so that works out well, but this is just great for after dinner, just sitting around and having a glass of this. It's really smooth. I mean, easy to drink. It's not taxing and big and roasty. You know, no. it's, it's just yeah, it's not eighteen really percent nice beer and, and challenging your palate. Yeah, the guys at Boulevard did this right. Mm -hmm. Jonah, great, my dear, great, great, great chocolate. And I'm really, I'm really glad Boulevard is. In SoCal, when I saw it at my local liquor store in Riverside, I was pretty stoked about it. Yeah, they took about a two and a half year hi hiatus and they found the right distributor for them for the volume of beer that they can put out here. And they're sending out they're sending out smart beers. They're sending out their Smokestack series, which right. is their kind of higher tier beer line. When they were out here the first time, I noticed that they had like brown ale and stuff like that, which they do great beers. There's a reason why Boulevard's so big. They do great beers, but it's a lot harder to compete when you come into another market like this. and you're using uh, very good um, core beers as your entry point. You really want to go in with your your some of your more interesting, unique beers right. to attract a crowd, and they definitely did. So cheers to Boulevard, cheers to J Jonna at So Rich, and cheers, John. Thanks, Bill. And hey, we're back. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the show again. We're IPAs. <laughs> um, so, final thoughts in on the bear. In case you forgot. In case yeah, you forgot. Like, final thoughts on the bear. Final thoughts on the bear <laughs> that ran through the room earlier. Big and so burly. Hairy. <laughs> Rawr. 
Uh, John, Weird. your thoughts on this? All right. Um, I mean, we've pretty much said it all. It's got that Pacific Northwest character to it. Um, I think the crystal malt shines through on this in a very, very good way. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it, it really went, works well with the hops. Um, it's, it's bitter um, to be bitter. I guess for what this is, it's it's a lower. It's better because it's just angry. Well, it's, it's a lower alcohol life. IPA. <laughs> right. But that's one thing we did. But play a higher out. IBU. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it's like well, and when you say IBU lower alcohol, you're talking about a six point one. It's it's a pretty high alcohol. Content I said a beer. lower alcohol IPA. Right. For IPA, that's right. that's for IPA. Yeah. That's pretty damn low. So I mean, for considering yeah. how low it is in alcohol and how high it is in IBU, is, but then you got the the grain bill that is working with that. Mm. It's really well done. Yeah, yeah, I think the crystal definitely brings out the, the malt characteristics enough to allow the low alcohol content to blend well with the high IP like you're talking about. So it, it creates a balance. Yeah, yeah, it creates it a balance level. even though that technically that balance with the with the it's a balanced uh, unbalancedness. Right. It's like the the alcohol balanced, level on this shouldn't be a balance, like but it is record. because I think the crystal malt does bring that out. I think the Munich brings a nice little mouthfeel to it that I wouldn't have expected otherwise. At the otherwise. same time, it's not like it's sticky sweet for being a it's not dry mm -hmm. like a SoCal IPA would be. It's it's right in the middle. It's it's tasty. Yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. not like it has this residual sweetness. That's really bad. Everything about this beer just screams balance to me. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's really nice. I think if you're if you're looking for just kind of like a new like go to IPA, you just need a six pack of something hoppy. I mean, if you've never had the the Caldera, definitely. And honestly, I, I wouldn't be ashamed of drinking this straight out of the can at a campsite. Oh, if I was camping, oh. I would just totally oh. like yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, I was like I, I, I was <laughs> right with John. I'm like I know where he's going next, and that's just gonna be a bad thing because he's he gonna, doesn't have to prove it. He's gonna shotgun that can, and that's not a good idea. <laughs> I'm gonna shotgun the can. I was gonna take a sip or two, and then. Drink oh, the I mean, overall, that. Caldera, they they have a, a wide variety of beers that they do that are worth picking up, and mm. this is just a, a yeah. staple for us that. And SoCal, it's it's always there. It's one of those beers that's always there, and I pick it up every now and then. And um, it's got a green tab. Yeah. Because it's green for the environment. Probably not. But anyway, so, if you're in the, uh, like we're doing nationwide beers because we're trying to make you happy. But if you're in the West Coast with us, um, you should come out to Riverside next week, um, April 6th. April 6th. For a brew with a view. Mm -hmm. um, it's across the street from the Riverside Airport is mm -hmm. Packing House. The Riverside Municipal Airport. Yeah, Riverside Municipal, right behind it's it. It's not an international airport. <laughs> No, it's definitely I not. I wish it was, though. <laughs> I know, right? Great. That'd be awesome. GBF from Riverside? <laughs> That's sweet. There's, yeah. a, there's a FedEx plane out there. We can park at Packing like House, get a beer, and then go over and get our flight and take off. Yeah. <laughs> like, so anyway, Matt brews at Packing House. If you don't know that, whatever. Um, you clearly don't follow any of us, and fuck you. Um, what? Yeah, Jesus. I don't, I don't know where that came from. Getting intense. <laughs> anyway. So, but April 6th is Bro the View. Um, it's going to be a great event. There's going to be beer and food. It's and the return of the coup de main. Yeah. It's yeah. also in the crash zone. We are in the crash zone. And we so actually have crash you zone. have, this is, this is what you have. You or have, the danger zone. You have an amazing view of like planes flying zone. around. You have awesome beer, including a singly produced, ready to be released, Crash Zone Pale Ale. Yeah, yeah. Extra oh, pale. and crash, crash Zone and you have the danger of dying. How could you not go to this event? It's this amazing. Twice because you're in We're Riverside. Yeah, exactly. It's not just the planes that might kill you. The people it's might the ghetto. Yeah. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. I was joking. I live in Mission Grove, so. Yeah, far from the ghetto. <laughs> that that, that, that ghetto. means so much to all the people watching. It will when they Google it. What else are we doing? Oh, this and then Steve? the week after that, we're going to be at an awesome event from our friends at the Brew Ha Ha. Also in the ghetto. Also in the ghetto. The Orange County ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> what else? No, it's not the ghetto. That exists. Um, no, exactly. That's called Garden Grove. Um. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> We're making everyone angry. Just people in Garden Grove and Riverside. That's true. <laughs> so what is this event that we're uh, doing? Grey Cloud is a an amazing cigar and beer pairing event. It's going to be really phenomenal. Uh, if you haven't bought tickets and they haven't sold out, which I'm pretty sure they're going to sell out pretty quick. So if you haven't bought tickets and you're in the area, buy tickets for that because it's going to be crazy. Bill uh, Bill's going to be pairing a lot of beers and cigars. There's going to be a lot of uh, Chris White from Golden State Tobacco is going to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also BoutiqueCigars.com, which is a new thing that's coming up between Bill and Chris, is something that's going to be pretty amazing as well. And that's going to be kind of launched, I think, at that event. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like a discount, 
like bargain cigars that are that are premium good cigars. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like it's a place to go to get like amazing cigars, really nice cigars at a price for... that you couldn't even possibly imagine. So it's going to be a great event. Stop I, out. I can't imagine it. Um, we'll be doing a show in a couple of weeks um, with the Brouhaha guys. Cameron um, is going to be here. We're also going to be doing it live. We're going to live stream it. So that'll be April fifth. We'll do it live. Prepare, so prepare um, if you prepare yourself for April fifth. You know, um, we're going to be doing some live streaming stuff. So a lot of stuff going on this in April. It's good times. Yeah, April got busy again. What the yeah, fuck? yeah, Caldera. Well, so Caldera, props. good on you. Cheers, great stuff. And uh, we love PD, PDX beer. Yeah. So, stay safe and drink beer.